and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. Hi folks, I'm Bob Schrupp, physical therapist. Brad Heine, physical therapist. Because we are the most famous physical therapists on the internet. In our opinion, of course, Bob. Okay, the title of today's program, Physical Therapist Shows How to Walk Correctly. Are we serious? I mean, we're actually going to show people how to walk? Yes, we are. If you want to have less neck pain, back pain, hip pain, knee pain, and foot pain while walking, not to mention some people even get headaches while they're walking ah. because of poor posture, follow these guidelines. And we'll talk about it. Walking's really fantastic if it's done correctly. We'll show you how to do it correctly. Okay, Bob. By the way, if you're new to our channel, please take a second to subscribe to us. We provide videos how to stay healthy, fit, pain-free, and we upload every day. <laughs> wow. Look at this. Also, if you're new to our channel, go to bobandbrad.com because we're always doing a giveaway. And if you, right this week, we're giving away the Sleepovation mattress. This, That's right, Bob. This is just a sample of the mattress. The mattress is much bigger. <laughs> uh, you can also go to Facebook. The contest will be pinned at the top of the page. Go to Twitter, or Instagram, or TikTok. Real quickly on the mattress, it's made up of 700 individual mattresses. And it's got chair, air channels that help keep it cool. That's right. So it's we we personally uh, we we both have this mattress and we both love them. Separate mattresses. So I said that we personally both have Carry mattresses. On. We better get on with the video. <laughs> All right. All right. So let's talk about it. The first thing you want to do. <laughs> the first thing you want to do when you're walking is reduce impact. This is the same truth that can be uh, be held with running. Sure. In fact, there's been a lot of uh, discussion and a lot of books about it uh, that you want to run with less impact. And, and I, I don't know if there's been studies on this, Brad, or not, but I see anecdotally a lot of people that tell me they were having a lot of pain throughout their limbs yep. with running. But once they started doing the forefoot running right. or the midfoot running, their pain levels decreased. So what he's talking about is when, when your foot comes down in front of you, if you strike with your heel first, which is very common, very right. popular. Look what it does. It sends a force up through the leg and into the hip. That that ground reaction force, they call that. Right. There's no sh natural shock absorber when you hit heel strike first. It goes directly right. through the bones to the joints. But if you come down on your forefoot. You're, or you're, maybe even your midfoot. Right. Well, I just want to use forefoot just to Try use that it. example. Yeah. Look at the cushion that you yeah, have. It's like a shock absorber in itself. Right. So your calf muscle and your thigh become more of the shock absorber. Yeah. In fact, a lot of times what they discuss is people who start becoming forefoot runners, mm -hmm. their calves get really sore at first because that's where the force is, go is being taken up right now. And I experienced that same thing yeah. when I transitioned. So uh, as a demonstration, one thing we show people is, you know, the other thing is if you hit your knee, your foot first, even if it's with walking, sure, um, you're really jamming the knee. Because um, what, what, if you hit midfoot or forefoot, you're going to have a little bit of gap in the knee. It's going to act as a shock absorber. It's a little flexed kind right, of. Right, a little right. flexed, right. So I'm going to show you. Let's say we put a peanut in there. And this peanut's going to represent the cartilage. What happens, Bob? Yep, and let's say the knee is completely straight. That's why every time you hit. There goes the cartilage. There goes the cartilage. And the, and the knee surgeon is smiling. Yeah, but you think about it. It's not happening every time. But when you take 10,000 steps in a day, you know, which what they're recommending right. now, that people try to get in 10,000 steps. Think about that. 10,000 times. Yeah. Force, 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 right. force. So anything you can do to reduce the force is going to help. So... One thing you may want to think about when you're walking is to shorten your strides. Sure. You can you can increase the stride cadence. Uh, cadence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how rapidly you, you stride, but you should shorten the stride. So it doesn't mean you have to walk slower. It just means you're going to walk with shorter strides. That's what they recommend with running too. They actually have you run with shorter strides. Right. You also, if you lean forward slightly, because if you're leaning back, that's when you're doing that. 
Yeah, you you're know what I mean. Almost forced into the heel. So straight. yeah, if you go, if you lean forward a little bit fat, it, and you actually, it's going to make you walk a little faster when you lean forward. And it's a very slight lean because slight if you lean. lean too far forward, then it's a postural, and that's problems too. So this is a subtle, subtle uh, lean. Now the last thing I was going to oh there are oh, those are too, yes. but I, I was going to mention this one. This is a little harder for a lot of people to understand. Is to t to actually engage your glutes, right? Because your glutes are larger muscles. And they actually take a little bit of force off the legs. Right. So they tell, talk about, again, if you take a shorter strides, but you actually want to kind of push off and feel your glutes engage. So like you can walk like this. You can feel your butt muscles kind of so kicking in. So you walk around the neighborhood like that too sometimes. Yeah, and they're, you know, I'm, they, on, a, I'm on a list now, I they, think. They do talk, <laughs> yeah, the neighbors. Yeah, they do talk. Anyway, that's something you can mess with. It's just a lot easier to shorten the strides. And make sure you're hitting on the forefoot or midfoot. Sure. You want to talk about that, Brad, too? That's another right. way to... Now, I've tried doing what Bob said. I can do it running. I turned into a forefoot runner, and I've tried the walking thing. I don't walk around like this, but that's challenging for me. It is. And, and if you really have a hard time with it, and you just get some insoles or some more cushioned shoes. You can buy shoes with more cushions. Some walking shoes are very heavily cushioned. If you don't have that, you can actually buy some inserts and they don't have an arch to speak of. The yeah, primary arch support. Right. The primary goal is just to cushion your feet. Uh, I've had people that work on concrete. Yes. Um, that's a good option for them, yeah. especially if they have to wear dress shoes uh, with the, you know, they just don't. Right, the rigid insole. Exactly. That, that can be a good option. Now these are, um, a lot of times you just take out the, existing insert right and replace it with this you can cut these off so that they fit in your shoe yeah i usually just take the old one out put it on top for a pattern trace it out yeah, for a yeah. pattern and if it's a dress shoe that you do not have well then you're going to have to be creative you, you can do it just that's what we're made to do is just to cut the forefoot to fit the shoe right you can do it all right once you reduce the impact you've got to be concerned about posture because i see people running brad and i see them walking and they're walking like this and if you walk like this, you're getting a little bit of the jarring. Sure. And, you know, I, that's what people talk about. They start getting a headache whenever they walk sure. because they're going like this and they're compressing the spine there yeah. in I the call, suboccipital area. I call there. it the gooseneck. The gooseneck, yeah. Um, but, yeah, and again, not to get confused, when he said you lean forward, you, yeah, you, we don't want you leaning forward like this. Right, not wrong. It's You're just a very you know, slight. Keeping your body still in straight posture. Yeah. Good point, Brad. You're thinking about your walk. You're almost falling forward. Yeah, but you're not. Right, but <laughs> you're not. Just in that, just a hint of that direction. So what you're going to do when you're walking, every so often I want you to do some chin tucks. Oh, yeah. So you're going to go ahead and give a reminder. This is where you want to have your head. You want your ears directly over your shoulders. Right, right. As much as you can attain that, it's going to be better. And, and this is one you can do without the neighbors talking. Right. You know, just, just, just subtly. Do and you don't have to chin -chin. do them forever. Just two or three of them is right. a good reminder. You might have Gladys Kravitz looking out the window there, and, and she'll see you right when you're doing it. But, you know, she always Ooh. talks about everything. She was from uh, Bewitched. She was the neighbor. Nosy oh, neighbor. Bewitched. Gladys yeah. Kravitz, I believe, right? Yeah, now you're pulling out the archives. Uh, okay, next one. The same thing, people have that rounded upper back and the shoulders are rounded and forward like this. So what you're going to do is you want to grab the wrist behind your back and stretch. And you can do this while you're walking, and it's the same thing. You're going to do it intermittently while you're walking. And this looks okay, doesn't it? But if you're doing, if you're walking along, if you go like this, just look at your stretching. But, but I'm but sure it, the neighbors are used to anything you come up with. Yeah. <laughs> No, that that's true. That's and you're not going to walk like this no, very long. No, just, just a few steps. Yep. But again, it resets you. It, it right. sets you into the right, right posture. Exactly. And it feels good actually. Yeah, this. you get a little stretch in the front. You know, it's a postural thing, and you can breathe better with it. I do this one every morning before I run. I walk down the hill. Yeah. And I stretch like this, just because it's a good time to stretch, and I. I I like to warm up a little bit, you know, not just go right into the run. I like to Are you walk. Done when you get to the bottom of the hill. Yeah, and then come back up. <laughs> no, no. I, I then I run. Oh, I see. So, all right. Next thing. This is hard for some people to grasp, but you actually there's less weight on your spine when you're walking faster than mm -hmm. there is if you walk real slow and you're lumbering along. 
So if you're having pain in your back, try pick it up to speed a little bit. I've had this work for some patients, and they, they just are always, you can just see it in their eyes, like, that works? And well, I think you're getting that vertical bounce with a forward motion. That, that whole concept in that running book, I think that sure. is same, similar yeah. with this. Yeah. Whatever. It works it, for a lot of people, so uh, sure. give, it, give, it, give that a try. Yep. We're also going to recommend, if you can, this obviously a lot of people can't do this, but it really helps if you can walk in nature. I mean, it really, uh, it, it, Brad had quoted a study in which you your stress levels decrease. Um, they, they compared it to walking in the city, right. urban areas, and it was obviously much better. There's less ruminating. Like if, mm. you're, if you have a thought that tends to go through your head over and over and over, over, over. Yeah. <laughs> The nature seems to help break that up. Right. So. Well, you can just imagine we got traffic. You got the fumes right. from the cars and uh, versus birds singing and uh, watching the wind, uh, the grass blow in the wind. And uh, right, you don't have to think about anything yeah. else. You just get thinking about it. So, um, I was just going to throw this in there. I thought I found this interesting. Steve Jobs, the the guy that founded oh. Apple, um, he used to do walk meetings. And they found, and there's some studies on this that shows your creativity increases when you walk and you actually talk and do meetings that way. So I just thought I'd throw it in there. You How many people in a meeting? Me some, yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. I think he often did like one-on-one -on -one meetings. Right, right. You know, what yeah. he, he just walk and You know, you've seen that movie. He's like, walk with me. And then we'll go and they'll talk about something important. And uh, Oh, like some of those gangster movies. Yeah, you're hey, walking. You Petey, we got to go for a walk. You go for a walk. You're not going to be coming back. <laughs> remember the cannoli. Yeah, you're going to you're gonna uh, remember that from we, the Godfather. We better, we better finish up, Bob. All right. Remember, Brad and I can fix just about anything. Except for. A broken heart. But we're working on this that. This works. This helps. The walking. Cardio, walk cardio well, helps. Well, that's a step in the right direction. Right. And no pun intended. Oh, step in the right direction. Right.